The Boeing 787 changed aviation forever. It didn't just challenge what airplanes could do, it redefined what passengers expected from flight itself. Quieter cabins, cleaner air, massive fuel savings. For airlines, the Dreamliner became a symbol of modern efficiency, the kind of jet that could rewrite their balance sheets overnight. And yet, hidden beneath the success of this revolutionary aircraft lies a surprising story. One Boeing probably doesn't want you to focus on, because while the Dreamliner family is a triumph overall, one of its members has quietly faded into irrelevance. The smallest, lightest, and once most ambitious version, the Boeing 7878, has gone from hero to afterthought. Orders have stalled, production has slowed, and many airlines that once celebrated it have moved on. So what happened? How did Boeing's original Dreamliner, the jet that started it all, become the one nobody wants anymore? Let's break it down. When Boeing launched the 7878 in 2004, the company wasn't just building another airplane. It was betting the future of commercial aviation on a brand new idea. The concept was simple but radical, a mid-sized, ultra-efficient aircraft that could connect distant cities directly without the need for massive hubs. For decades, long-haul flying was dominated by the hub-and-spoke model, passengers connecting through big cities like London, Dubai or Atlanta. The 7878 promised to change that. With its lightweight composite body, advanced aerodynamics and ultra-efficient engines, it could make smaller point-to-point -point routes economically viable for the first time. It was also designed to replace Boeing's aging workhorse, the 767, one of the most important aircraft in Boeing's history. The company envisioned the 7878 as a natural successor, carrying a similar number of passengers, but flying much farther and burning 20 to 30% less fuel. Early reaction was explosive. Airlines rushed to order it, eager to unlock new routes and new profits. The Dreamliner seemed unstoppable, the beginning of a new golden age for Boeing. But the same traits that made it so appealing at first would later become its biggest obstacles. Because aviation, as it turns out, doesn't reward innovation alone. It rewards the aircraft that fit into a changing world. And that's where the 7878 story takes a sharp turn. The 7878's early success was undeniable. More than 400 orders came in quickly from airlines across the world, from ANA in Japan to American Airlines, Air India, and Qatar Airways. It was everything Boeing had hoped for, a jet that combined long-haul capability with impressive fuel savings, all while offering passengers an unprecedented level of comfort. But after those first few years, something strange happened. Orders slowed, then stopped altogether. Since 2020, Boeing has only managed to add two new 7878s to its backlog. At first glance, it's tempting to blame the pandemic, Boeing's quality control issues, or supply chain chaos. But those explanations fall short because other versions of the same airplane, the 78789 and 78710, have continued to sell in strong numbers. So clearly, airlines still love the Dreamliner. They've just fallen out of love with this one. Why? Because the market that once needed the 7878 doesn't really exist anymore. Most airlines that operated the 767, the model the 7878 was meant to replace, already modernized their fleets years ago. ANA, Japan Airlines, American, Air Canada, they all upgraded long ago. The remaining few, like Delta and United, are holding on to their 767s seven, longer. But even if both bought a few more 7878s, seven, eight, seven, it wouldn't meaningfully change the numbers. The replacement market dried up. But even that doesn't fully explain it, because the 7878 seven, wasn't just supposed to replace old jets. It was supposed to open new frontiers. And that's where the next part of the story begins. When Boeing designed the 7878, its competition seemed obvious, Airbus's A330. But something remarkable happened in the years that followed. Competition didn't come from another wide body. It came from above and below. Enter the single aisle revolution. Airbus's A321neo family, and especially the upcoming A321XLR, completely changed how airlines think about long range travel. These jets can fly nearly 5,000 nautical miles, that's 11 hours of flight time, 
on a single aisle platform. In the past, narrow bodies were limited to short hops, but not anymore. Modern engines, lighter materials, and smarter wing designs have pushed their range into territory once reserved for wide bodies like the 7878. And here's the critical part. They do it at a fraction of the cost. A 7878 weighs about 120 metric tons empty, an A32-1 Neo less than half that. Yet it can carry almost as many passengers, around 200, compared to the 787's 240 in a similar layout. That means lower fuel burn, cheaper maintenance, and fewer crew costs. For airlines chasing profit margins, that math is irresistible. Why operate a large, expensive wide body for a route that a smaller, cheaper plane can now handle just as efficiently? That's the quiet revolution Boeing didn't see coming. While the 7878 was built for the long, thin routes, small cities far apart, narrow bodies like the A321XLR are now eating those markets alive. And the Dash 8, once the perfect tool for the job, suddenly doesn't fit anywhere perfectly. If you want to understand why the 7878 lost momentum, you have to look at its place in the family. It's the smallest of the three Dreamliners, but not small enough to compete with single aisle jets, and not large enough to deliver the per seat economics airlines crave on long haul routes. In other words, it's stuck in a no man's land. The 7879, its slightly larger sibling, offers more range, carries more passengers, and burns less fuel per seat. It's also the variant Boeing optimized its design around, meaning it benefits from improved aerodynamics and lighter systems. For airlines, the decision is simple. If you're going to invest in a long-haul Dreamliner, why settle for the least efficient version? This middle child problem isn't new in aviation. It's what doomed other models like the Airbus A318 or Boeing 737-600. They work fine, but they don't work better than what's already available. And in the razor-thin world of airline economics, fine just isn't good enough. But the real irony, the 7878's biggest rival isn't Airbus. It's its own family. Technically, the 7878's direct competitor is the Airbus A330-800. On paper, it's a similar jet. Long-range, mid-sized, efficient. In reality, it's been a disaster for Airbus. Only a dozen units have ever been sold. So if Airbus isn't stealing customers, what is? The answer lies in airline strategy. Modern carriers want fleet commonality, fewer aircraft types that can cover more missions. That means simpler training, maintenance, and spare part logistics. The 78789 already fits perfectly in that plan. It covers almost all of the same routes as the 78788, but with better efficiency. So for airlines, buying the smaller model adds unnecessary complexity. Meanwhile, for shorter routes, narrow bodies like the A321neo are simply cheaper to run. So, between its bigger sibling above and new narrow body rivals below, the 78788 has been boxed in. It's not losing to one specific plane, it's losing to the entire direction the industry is moving in. And for Boeing, that presents a difficult question. Fix it or forget it? From a technical standpoint, Boeing could modernize the 7878, streamline its systems, lighten its structure, and make it more aligned with the Young 9's latest upgrades. But there's a big problem, time and money. Boeing is already stretched thin, juggling delayed certifications for the 737 MAX 7, MAX 10, and the 777X. Resources are limited, and every engineering team is focused on getting those aircraft into service. That leaves little room to rework an older, slower-selling variant. And even if Boeing did decide to invest, it might not make sense strategically. The company's next big move, the rumored new midsize airplane, or NMA, is expected to bridge the gap between the 737 MAX and the 787 family. In many ways, that future jet would replace the 7878's role entirely, offering similar range but with lower operating costs. So, rather than breathe new life into the smallest Dreamliner, Boeing seems content to let it fade quietly into history. That's a tough truth for a jet that once carried the company's biggest hopes. But in aviation, pragmatism always wins over nostalgia. And yet, despite its fading relevance, the 7878 still deserves credit. Because without it, the rest of the Dreamliner family might never have existed. It's easy to look at the 7878's declining sales and call it a failure, but that misses the point entirely. 
The 7878 was the proof of concept that changed everything. It was the first commercial aircraft to use a carbon fiber fuselage. It introduced new levels of passenger comfort with higher cabin humidity, larger windows, and lower pressurization altitude. Features passengers now expect as standard. It forced Airbus to rethink its own strategy, leading to the A350 and the re-engineered A330neo. And it gave Boeing the data, experience, and infrastructure it needed to produce the far more successful 787, 89, and 10. In short, the 7878 walked so the rest of the family could fly. But history in aviation is rarely sentimental. Aircraft evolve, markets shift, and yesterday's innovation becomes today's redundancy. The 7878 will remain in service for decades, quietly connecting cities and carrying passengers who may not even realize they're sitting inside a piece of history. But as new generations of aircraft take flight, more efficient, more flexible, and perhaps even electric, the original Dreamliner's role will continue to shrink. And maybe that's fitting. The 7878 was never meant to dominate forever. It was meant to open the door to a new era. And that's exactly what it did. So, is there still a place for the Boeing 7878? Perhaps not in new orders. But in the story of modern aviation, its place is permanent. It's the jet that proved Boeing's boldest ideas could work, the aircraft that reimagined what long haul could mean, and the foundation upon which one of the most successful wide-body programs in history was built. It may no longer be the star of the show, but the stage it built is still full. If you've ever flown on a 7878 from Tokyo to Seattle, from Warsaw to Chicago, or from Delhi to Toronto, you've experienced the start of a revolution that still shapes how we fly today. And maybe next time you board one, you'll see it not as a forgotten jet, but as the aircraft that dared to dream first. Thanks for watching. If you learned something new today, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and let me know in the comments. Do you think Boeing should revive the 7878 or let it retire gracefully? Until next time, keep looking up.